this video is about micro torches and um, basically the main topic is I want to discuss one of TJ Games ideas he is using the pointless syringe tips well I have one of those um, tips that's similar to that that you use to refill ink cartridges well I had to do a few modifications to get mine to work right um, I had wrapped brass wire around it because it was burning up it was consuming as I used it and um, it looked like a little flashlight on the end of my torch the tip of the needle was getting white hot it was really neat but like I said it was consuming my tip so I had to do something about that I got about half inch of tip left there and I wrapped the rest in brass wire but basically just this little thing right here is the new tip I seen how um, he had made his small and I kind of like how the ergonomics of this are far more dexterous than the big cumbersome thing that I have and also I still got a lot of bronze wool left over from out of the microwave and uh, I didn't use hardly any in this thing at all when it doesn't flash back um, I'm using a far smaller hole than I ever would before I don't know if I can get a good view in on that or not it's a hole that's far smaller than something I would typically think would be what you want to use for a torch but the advantage of it is is that now my cell builds up pressure I have a pressure gauge in my cell usually it never built up pressure now the longer I let it run the more the pressure builds up so the gas isn't escaping at the rate it's being created no matter what wattage I'm using which is kind of a good thing because it shoots out a pretty good jet now uh, I'm gonna fire it up and show what is so valuable about having a highly precise micro torch I'm going to be doing some soldering on these pieces of brass. But what I've done is made it hard on us here. I put some paper around the tops of these. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a piece of paper, and I cut little slots out so we can set this brass bar on top of it here. I'm going to solder that together with that paper on there. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. But I'm going to use this butane torch just to kind of show how good and how precise a hydrogen torch is for high precision soldering and doing craft work and just making prototypes and things like that okay I'm at about 18 amps there one that doesn't shine that'll grow here in a minute it's a very tiny flame but yeah it's very capable there's a good shot of it right there, I think. We'll get going a little better in a second. I'll turn the lights out just to get a shot of that. trouble getting by that paper. I'm going to have to burn a little bit of it. Okay. Definitely burning some paper there. Another thing I can shut this off. The cell is now off, but I'm still getting a very good flame, and it'll do that for a minute. Um, I'm probably up to about two psi's, but uh, that super little tiny flame 
Let's shut that off. When you let it get down too low, it burns inside there and gets real hot and melts everything. As you can see, that did solder on there. We did burn some paper, as expected. But, um, I hope this focuses for you. Some paper was burnt, but there's still paper up above the actual ridge. I don't know if you can see how I just flapped that over. It didn't just brutally destroy everything. The solder joint, I'm going to bust it if I can. Unbustable solder joint. I mean, you can break it, but I mean, I don't want to go knocking my laptop off trying to be a fool here. So that's minimal damage. Probably set off every smoke detector in the house using this thing. This thing don't have much of a flame on it. It's really a piece of junk. So. I don't know why I'm bothering doing this. We all know what's going to happen, but. I'm going to try to do my best not to foil it. Okay, I think that's soldered. Let me make sure there. Done. Okay. Definitely got all the way down to the edge of the paper. Except for on this side, it too has a flap. So it wasn't like a huge, huge difference. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of this paper that was burned on this one was because of direct contact from the flame. Whereas on our hydrogen one, almost 90% of this burn was just traveling combustion that started at a source point. So even though both of them are showing very similar burn characteristics, the manner within which they each burnt is entirely different. If this wasn't a super flammable piece of paper on the hydrogen one, we would have only done minimal damage. Maybe I should have done the experiment with plastic or something that doesn't just flame up into flames like that. But anyway, which one did I do? Oh my goodness, did you see that? I just barely pulled on this. <laughs> this is the... The one we just did with the butane. Um, apparently, we got a very weak joint out of that. Solder did um, tin up in there. So there's that. That was a crap joint. Caught everything on fire. This, I'll try to break it again. I just can't really get a grip on it. Nah, man, that thing is solid as a rock, and it's still got paper showing, fellas. So the hydrogen micro torch is definitely a good call. Um, if it wasn't for TJ Game, I never would have thought about building something this little. This is definitely the way to go. Thanks a lot, brother. Uh, now we're going to see what else this little thing can do here. We're going to up the amps. There's 61 amps. Ain't too happy about that. Well, there. It's far sharper than what the image is showing on here. But that's the micro torch flame when it gets going. It is kind of cockeyed there, but that little thing is awesome. Look at that little hole. Definitely good for drilling tiny holes. There's that penny just to give you an idea of its capabilities. It too got a hole in it. That thing is just 